everyone, my name is Miss Serena, the class teacher of 16. Uh, I want to wish a uh, warmest congratulations to all the students for their achievement. And you are a proof that good things come to those who are willing to sacrifice to reach a worthwhile uh, goal. So I'm very proud of you. Best wishes and take care. Bye bye. Have a great day. everyone my name is Ashi Nityani and today we're going to talk about ocean pollution what is ocean pollution ocean pollution is a complex mixture made up of mercury plastic waste manufactured chemicals petroleum waste agriculture runoff and biological threats like harmful algal blooms what are the five types of ocean pollution pesticides herbicides fertilizers, detergents, oil, industrial chemicals, and sewage. Here are some of the major causes of ocean pollution. Oil spills, littering, ocean mine mining, harmful to marine animals, and a threat to human health. Industrial waste. One of the most devastating industrial waste is water pollution. For many industrial processes, water is used, which comes in contact with harmful chemicals. These chemicals include organic compounds such as solvents, metals, nutrients, or radioactive material. Oil spill in ocean. The largest marine oil spill in all of U.S. history was the Deepwater Horizontal Horizon Spill on April 20, 2010. Radioactive waste. Once in seawater, radiation can hurt our ocean animals in several ways by killing them outright. Sewage. There are billion people on Earth, so treating sewage is a big priority. This is a graph of ocean pollution increasing by all the year. Effect on the environment. Water pollution has surely harmed biodiversity biodiversity and aquatic ecosystems on human health water pollution has very negative effects on public health there are a lot of diseases from result from drinking or being in contact with contaminated waters such as diarrhea chloria typhoid dyspnea or skin infections fact there are 100 million animals die each year from plastic waste alone this is my best friend. Thank you.
Hi, I am Dr. and today I will be talking about phishing scams. There are many types of phishing scams, and here are some examples. Email phishing, spear phishing, whaling. Phishing is a cyber crime in which a target or targets are contacted by email, telephone, or text message by someone posing as a legitimate institution to lure individuals into providing sensitive data, such as personal information, banking, and credit card details, and passwords. Solutions to prevent phishing scams. Solution one, know what a phishing scam looks like. If the format shares traits of that of a phishing scam, you should try to avoid it, and you have a good chance to avoid a potential attack. Solution two, don't give your information to an unsecured site. If the URL of the page does not start with a HTTPS or does not have a closed padlock next to it, you should not enter any sensitive info if the site is not secure. Solution three, keep informed about phishing techniques. New phishing scams are developed all the time. So if you know how a phishing scam is laid out, you could find out if it's a phishing scam and easily avoid it. Solution four, avoid the emails that are not directed towards you. Sometimes while people are trying to scam you, they ask you to pay for something you might have not purchased. Example, you might have not purchased a Netflix subscription and you receive an email like this. Solution five, installing firewall. You can install firewalls to add an extra layer of protection to reduce the chance of a hacker infiltrating sensitive information. Conclusion, I have concluded that sometimes it's hard to tell apart from a phishing scam and a real email. So that, so that is why we have to take precautions to prevent getting scammed. Here's my bibliography. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Janvi, and today I'm going to explain about my project, Cleaning, Drinking Water, and Sanitization. So let's begin. Water plays a major function in our day-to-day -day life cycle. Our earth contains 70% of water, which is to be sufficient for the growth of each human life form. But sadly, Millions of people die annually, mostly young children, because of bad sanitization and unclean water supply. But have you ever wondered what does clean water and sanitization truly mean? Clean water means water that is pure, fresh, and free from all types of germs. And sanitization is a process of cleaning the human body, especially hands, which get infected. Clean water and sanitization are integral for maintaining good health because they help stop spread the diseases and infections. Water conservation also plays a vital role in increasing efficiency, thus contributing to provide life hoods. But as I told before, that millions of people die because of bad sanitization and unclean water supply. We can see till now around 829,000 people in low and middle income countries die as a result of unclean water supply and bad sanitization. But the main cause of people dying by unclean water and bad sanitization is the diseases and infections. Poor, san poor sanitization and unclean water cause diseases such as chloria, typhoid, intestinal worm infections, and polio. But someone has told that there is always a solution to a problem. Yes, desolation. Desolation is the solution of purifying sea water or salt water for human consumption. Personal filter straws. These are Ha handy small scale technologies that allow individuals to drink from just about any source with the expectation of salt water. Bicycle water purifiers. Water can be harnessed directly from the source and cleaned as a, as a cyclist pedals. The water passes through a system of microfiltration membranes before it is stored in a container. And last but not the least, solar cells. This simple solution involves harnessing the power of the sun 
to distill water in order to generate portable clean water. So I hope you understand my point of view and come together and help the people who are in need of clean water and sanitization. Thank you. Hello guys, welcome to my presentation on Cold War by S.P. Bairav Aditya. What is Cold War? Cold War was an ongoing political rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union and their respective allies that developed after World War II. When did Cold War begin? Cold War began in the year 1947 and ended in the year 1962. Which countries fought in the Cold War? Countries fought in the Cold War were Poland, Hungary, Bulgaria, Romania, East Germany and Albania. Historians have identified several causes that led to the outbreak of Cold War. What, what caused Cold War? Well, why did Cold War end? During the 1989 and 1990, the Berlin Wall came down, borders opened, and the free elections were there. Who fought in Cold War? After World War II, the United States and the Allies and the Soviet Union and its satellite states began to decades of hunting. Which countries won in Cold War? Historians have believed the U.S. won in the Cold War largely agree that American victory was graduated through finances. Uh, this is my uh, the, the, this is my e-poster um, e-poster Cold War. Cold War which started in 12th March 1947 and ended in 26 December 19, uh, 1991. The Cold War was a period of geopolitical tension between the United States and the Soviet Union. Bye guys. Thank you guys. Um, from Hello everyone. I am Marika Sisiti from 6D. The topic for my exhibition this year is over energy consumption. I chose this topic to create an awareness to reduce over energy consumption because when I visited a hospital, I noticed they left the lights on even though there was enough natural light from the window. The simplest definition of energy is the ability to do work. Energy consumption is the power or energy used. In simple words, over energy consumption happens when we consume more energy than needed. A few types of energy are chemical, electrical, heat, light, mechanical, nuclear, sound, etc. Note, in this project, I'm focusing over consumption on electrical energy, heat energy, mechanical energy, sound energy, and light energy. An example of electrical energy over consumption, leaving the air conditioner on even when the door or window is open. An example of heat energy over consumption. In the food factory, there is a leakage in the heat processing pipe. An example of mechanical energy over consumption. A less occupied ride in an amusement park. An example of sound energy over consumption. Unnecessary honking on the roads. An example of light energy over consumption, leaving the lights on even when there is natural light. The main reason of over energy consumption is overpopulation. Over energy consumption gives us problems like soil erosion, global warming, etc. Forgetting to turn the lights off, leaving your electronics and appliances plugged, using many light bulbs, taking extra long shower, using extra energy for cooking, etc. From this exhibition project, I request everyone to use energy efficiently because over energy consumption creates problems not only to themselves but also to others. Over energy consumption connects to a lot of other problems like global warming, soil erosion, etc. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Sahil Aswani from the grade 6D. 
Recently, I've been researching about the deforestation of mangroves. Under the central idea, the importance of mangrove trees and climate change affecting the earth. Supporting my UN sustainability goal, climate action. Did you know that 30 to 50% of mangrove forests have been lost due to shrimp farming, tourism, intrusive coastal development, and other factors? I, my journey began when I started researching videos and websites for this topic. With all the information I found, I made a KWH chart and a logo. My action was that I made a video on YouTube to spread awareness. If you want to know more about my journey, you can check my Google sites. Some organizations like Mangrove Action Project MAP help us rebuild mangroves, which you can donate to. Mangroves can't speak up for themselves, and we can be their voice. Thank you. Exhibition Topic Weaver by Zipuvia. View pollution. View pollution is one of the pollution or ocean pollution. And view pollution is part of ocean pollution because river flow to sea and yes, trash also flow by river and reach to sea. What is water pollution? Water pollution is a contamination of water bodies, usually as a result of humans, human activities in such a manner that negatively affects its legitimate uses. Causes of pollution include spills or leaks from oil and chemical containers, trade effluent going into surface water drains, or straight into water courses, removing too much water from surface waters and ground water. Flood. Flood is one of natural disasters and it gives a lot of effect to us. It is destroying the buildings and some people are drowned by the flood. What is flood? A flood is an overflow of water that submerges the land that is usually dry. In the sense of flowing water, the word may also be applied to the inflow of a tide. Floods are an area of study of the discipline hydrology and are of significant concern in agriculture. How does it affect us? Flood comes immediately, so we can't get ready for it. It damaged property, destruction of crops, loss of livestock, non-functioning of infrastructure, facilities, and deterioration of health condition owing to waterborne diseases. What causes flood? The main reason is a heavy rain, cutting down trees and concrete buildings. How can we reduce the pollution and flood? First, we must reduce using the plastic litters. Second, we must not throw the litters away in river. We must throw them away at garbage can. Third, we must plant trees to reduce flood. When we keep these three things, we can reduce one of pollution and one of disaster. Thank you for listening. Child labor by Pisha Girshahani of Class 60. Introduction. Hello, I'm Pisha and today I will be talking about child labor. I picked up this topic because I feel that not many people are familiar with child labor and how bad it actually is. I want to spread awareness on this topic and want to find ways to solve this problem. Children really don't deserve to be treated like that, so we have to find a way to stop child labor. Child laborers. An example of child labor, a global issue that is mentally and physically deprives kids who are supposed to be enjoying their youth. What is child labor? The term child labor means work that drains children of their youth, their capability, and their nobility and that is disadvantages to physical and mental development. Most of these kids have to face human trafficking and getting abused and beaten up by employers. They go through that to earn money, despite being children whom at this age are supposed to be studying, playing, and enjoying themselves. 
These children are treated poorly with less food to eat and barely any clothes to wear. A solution to child labor. One of the most important solutions to these situations are child rights. They give kids a voice and the right to live a happy and secure life. Children are given the right to play, speak, study, and so much more. But apart from that, we can also increase access to education and donate to poverty organizations to support the children. Child laborers in Indonesia. This girl works every day on a tobacco farm in Indonesia. She harvests leaves day and night. This is the bibliography. This is my brochure. It talks about an organization called the International Initiative to End Child Labor, which you can donate to in order to provide education and training to victims of child labor. Simply open the link and follow the instructions to donate to the site. Thank you. Good morning all, my name is Harthi Kupta and I'm from class 16. Today I'll talk about unemployment and my goal is to reduce unemployment because it leads to big issues in the world such as poverty. Countries and their unemployment rate. There's roughly one person who loses their job every second. That means around 86,400 per day. You, do you know that the country with the highest unemployment rate is Burkina Faso? with a rate of 77%, which means out of 100 people, 77%, 77 of them are probably unemployed. And the country with the lowest unemployment rate is Cocos Keeling Islands with a 0.1 unemployment rate. Side effects of unemployment. If it could not have been worse, there are even effects of unemployment like poverty, debt, and crime, and etc. Why do countries have a high unemployment rate? It is normally either of two ways, either cynical unemployment or the natural rate of unemployment. Types of unemployment and their examples. Frictional, employees leaving to find a new job. Seasonal, a jacket shop which is only used in the winter. Technological, robots instead of waiters. Residual, Old or disabled people unable to work. Structural. Cynical. Being fired because the boss doesn't have enough money. Hidden. Past work time workers. Solution to unemployment. We can create new jobs. The number of jobs that need to be created depends on the unemployment rate and the number of people entering the labor workforce in search of work. If there are if the economy can't create enough new jobs, that's when the government steps in. They will make more factories. Thank you. Hey everyone, decarbonization, the concept to obtain sustainability is the topic chosen by me to represent in our grade six exhibition. In the broader sense, Decarbonization refers to the reduction of carbon intensity of our atmosphere. I did a small experiment to study the behavior of carbon dioxide. I took two jars. One jar shows one jar shows a clean atmosphere, while the other one shows a carbonized atmosphere. I put clay on top to trap the heat. After five minutes, I measured the, the temperature in both the jars, and I was surprised to find that the temperature that the temperature of the carbon dioxide atmosphere was 4 degrees more than the decarbonized one. And this is how climate change works. How is the atmosphere decarbonized? We use plants, trees, phytoplankton, and carbon farms. Plants and trees take in carbon dioxide, while carbon farms are designed to store in carbon dioxide. Cause and effect of excessive carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Causes are huge industrial exhaust and excessive use of automobiles. And effects are lung, lung illnesses, air glands, and also infected waters. I did some research on the amount of carbon dioxide emitted by, by every country each year. I found out that France emitted only 4 tons of, of carbon dioxide and UK emitted 8 tons. 
to re reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, we must take some action. Recently, President Jokowi spoke at the UN Climate Change Conference about Indonesia's A forest treatment program that claimed to restore 60,000 hectares of forest. The, the UK government also committed to achieving a net zero greenhouse gas by 2050. We can help too by, by stop burning fossil fuels and also re reduce the amount of electrical vehicles. Thank you. Cholera outbreak. What is cholera outbreak? Cholera outbreak is a deadly disease which is caused by bacteria that has been stored in water and in food. Where was the first cholera outbreak? The first ever outbreak was in India. The Ganges Delta at 1870s. After India got infected, the disease kept on spreading. How did cholera start in India? Cholera began in India at 1817 because of steaming bread that has been contaminated. What symptoms will you get if you get cholera? If you get cholera, you will get symptoms like vomiting, thirst, and diarrhea, etc. Is there a cure on cholera? Yes. Cholera does have a cure. It's called oral or intravenous hydration. Things people should do to not get cholera. Use clean water, drink fresh water, wash your hands frequently, and cook food well. Thank you for seeing my slide. Bye. Have a good day. Hi, my name is Prapa, and I'm going to be talking about river basin management. What is a river basin? A river basin is the area of land over which surface runoff flows by streams, rivers, and lakes into the sea. A river basin sends all the water that falls within it to a central river and from there to the ocean. A river basin drains all of the land around a major river. The main parts of a river basin are the mouth, confluence, tributary, main river channel, watershed, and source. Why is a river basin important? A river basins contribute to the land in various ways. It provides water for life and allows animals, plants, industry, agriculture, and human settlements to exist. The floodplain of mature, late-stage rivers provide flat land for villages, towns, and cities. Why do river basins need to be managed? River basins need to be managed because river flow is often insufficient to meet all needs fully. Water management experts have acknowledged the need for trade-offs in river management. Otherwise, problems may occur. Impact if river basins aren't managed. If river basins aren't properly managed, it can create many problems like agriculture, as it can carry many useful stuff like bacteria for helping the land. Animals, plants, and people can struggle from this too, as water may be a hassle to get. How can we solve river basin management? Organizations can be made with many experts on water and managing the water to manage the river basins to work on dams and other stuff to keep the water flowing. This is the websites I've used to gain this information. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sudan Prabhu and today I'm going to be showing you my PowerPoint presentation of my exhibition, The Black Plague. How does it affect us? The Black Death, which hit to Europe in 1347, claimed an astonishing 20 million lives in just four years. As for how to stop the disease, people still had no scientific understanding of the illness.
Where did it come from? The Black Death exceeded 25 million people during the 14th century, which was about two thirds of the population in, in, in Europe that, at that time. Rats traveled on ships and brought flea with, fleas, with, fleas and the plague with them. Did people survive the Black Plague? The first outbreak, two thirds of the population contracted the illness and most patients died. In the next, half of the population became ill, but only some died. The third, a tenth were affected and many survived. While the fourth occurrence, only one in 20 people were sickened and most of them survived. So, I hope that you like I hope that you like my PowerPoint presentation and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good morning, respected principal, sir, supervisors, coordinators, teachers, parents, and my dear friends. My name is Gaurav and I'm from 6D. My topic for today is poverty under the subject math. Poverty is a state or condition in which a person or community lacks the financial resources and essentials for a minimum standard of living. Poverty also means that the income level from employment is so low that basic human needs can't be met. In Indonesia, 9.8% of the population lived below the national poverty line in 2020. As a consequence of poverty and food scarcity, 19.4 million Indonesians are unable to meet their dietary needs. Children living in poverty experience the daily impacts such as hunger, illness, insecurity, and even mental instability. These are some coping mechanisms applied by the households in Indonesia during the pandemic. The 2020 household survey shows that up to 51% of households in Indonesia have neither savings nor assets. Indonesia's economy entered a crisis since the pandemic in 2020. The increasing population becoming infected with COVID-19 lowered the household's ability to fulfill their daily needs. The social restrictions imposed by the government also increased the unemployment rate by 2.7 million people. Some of the ways to reduce poverty in Indonesia are to raise minimum wages, educate children, provide clean water and basic healthcare to the public, and support environmental programs. This is my brochure, which is the supporting material for my PowerPoint presentation. Thank you for watching. Hi, I am Santos, and my exhibition topic is animal poaching. My goal is to raise awareness because I don't want animals to suffer for the things that we want and desire. The topics that I'm going to cover are what is animal poaching, the effects of animal poaching, and the solutions to animal poaching. Animal poaching is an illegal business where poachers subdue or kill animals for their natural resources. For example, the poachers take African rhino horns and sell them to Asian countries like China and Vietnam. As in those countries, the rhino horn is used for traditional medicine and also as they symbolize wealth and prosperity. Poaching animals can have adverse effects on the food chain and ecosystem. Because if you poach an animal a lot, then the animal will become endangered and maybe even extinct. And for the other animals that hunted the animals that got extinct, their food supply will be gone. So the food chain and ecosystem is disrupted. For example, 
If poachers made the red panda gone extinct, then the predators of the red panda, like snow leopards and martens, their food support is completely gone, and the food chain of the entire area will be disrupted. Some of the solutions to animal poaching are to put more trackers and sensors in the wild. Harmless and undetectable trackers need to be used in wildlife tracking to enable those in the control rooms to have an accurate data representation on the number of animals, their location, and any threat or poachers that might come to them. And also, another solution is to give animals that are endangered a sanctuary so they can be protected from animal poachers and also so their population can grow and recover. Thank you. Hello, respected principal, sir, teachers, supervisors, parents, and my dear friends. I am Jonna, and I am Bella, and today we're going to talk about water pollution. Water pollution is harming our planet, and we are the culprits. This is our daily vlog we made on water pollution. Some effects of water pollution are the destruction of biodiversity, infant mortality, and health problems. And from causes are oil spills and waste of garbage. We can prevent this by cleaning up after our pets if we have any, fixing oil leaks, and never flush medicine down the drain. I hope this has increased your awareness and have a blessed day. Thank, Thank you. you. Indonesian Heroes Hello, my name is Dennis Suhandi Hutomo. My topic for the exhibition is Indonesian Heroes. The reason why I chose this topic is because as an Indonesian, I believe it is our duty to remember those who have sacrificed and fought for us. It is our duty to ensure that these heroes live in, on in our history and hearts. With this topic, my goal is to com commemorate and give appreciation towards these heroes for what they have done for our country. These heroes have fought for us and our nation so that we may enjoy life to a greater extent. However, as time passes, these heroes are getting forgotten. The heroes I will be discussing are Kurt Nyak Dien, Pito Shalev, also known as Tuanku Imbambonjo, General Sordiman, Devi Sartika. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Zara from 6D. My exhibition topic is the history of Indonesia. What is Indonesia's brief history? Indonesia was colonized by the Dutch in the early 7th century, while Japan ruled the island from 1942 to 1945. After Japan surrendered, Indonesia declared independence, but it took the Netherlands four years to relinquish its colonies. Who was the first to discover Indonesia? From the 16th century onwards, Europeans such as the Portuguese came to Indonesia in search, search of a monopoly on Malacuse, prized nutmeg, cloves, and Cuba pepper. The Dutch East India Company, VOC, was founded in 1602, and by 1610, the Dutch has established themselves as the leading European force. Where did Indonesia originate from? Ancestral migration began 72,000 years ago, when a population of Homo sapiens, or modern humans, traveled south from Africa to the Arabian Peninsula, eventually arriving in India. Around 50,000 years ago, the ancestors of initial wave of humanity landed in what is now the Indonesian archipelago. Who was the owner of Indonesia? Between the, between the 13th and 16th century, the archipelago progressively adopted Islam after centuries of being influenced by Indian culture, which bought Hinduism and Buddhism. Indonesia was the first colonized by the Dutch in the early 7th century and it was controlled by Imperial Japan from 1942 to 1945. Who was the one who came up with the term Indonesia? George Samuel Win Windsor Earl, a British ethologist, is thought to have created the term Indonesia. 
and put it into scholarly discourse in 1850 after going back and forth with other names. The name Indus comes from the word Indies, while in Asia means island in Greek Nisos. Thank you. Good morning, respected principal, supervisor, coordinator, teachers, parents, and my dear friends. My name is Raika, and today my exhibition topic is gender inequality. First, 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 what is gender inequality? Gender inequality is discrimination against one gender by another gender while getting more rights with one gender than another one. Let's get into the history of gender inequality. Gender inequality started around the 1930s and it affected a lot of people. In the 1960s, more females than ever were entering the paid workforce and this increased the dissatisfaction among women regarding huge gender disparities in pay. Gender inequality has, has its roots in differences between men and women in society. In the 1960s, there was a women rights movement in the 1960s and 70s that sought equal rights and opportunities and greater personal freedom for women. Gender equality became an issue in the early 1990s. Here is a time, here's a timetable of the event of gender equality from 1932 to 2011. Why is it important to teach gender inequality instead of gender equality instead of gender inequality to people? Gender equality has been an issue for so long and we need to put a stop to it. So we must teach other people that it is wrong and people should have equal rights. Here are some quotes I gathered, I gathered from Oprah Winfrey, the president of Harvard, Drew Cliffin Faust, and Gloria Steinem. Here is my brochure. And this is my bibliography. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Tanya, and my topic is Metaverse, Boon or Bain. The Metaverse is a virtual reality space where users can interact with each other. The Metaverse became more popular when Facebook Inc. changed its name to Meta. As you can see, the Metaverse is already a very big thing even though it is very new to us. Right now, the Metaverse is limited to gaming and social media. So to see the impact of the Metaverse and gaming on common people like us, I decided to make a questionnaire. It was filled by 45 people of different ages and backgrounds. After analyzing some data, I've got to know that 74% of the respondents knew about the Metaverse, younger ones mainly, 91% of those aware of the Metaverse knew only about the games, and 85% of those aware of the games have played the Metaverse games themselves. As a positive point, people enjoy playing games on the Metaverse and avatars increase their confidence. But as a negative point, bullying is common, bad language is encouraged, and people who spend a lot of time on the metaverse don't have many friends in the real world. Dangers of gaming, discrimination, fake identities, hacking, addiction, depression, wastage of time. Fun facts and other uses of the metaverse. Many celebrities are doing concerts in the metaverse. People are buying land in the metaverse. These are some examples. So the conclusion is that right now the metaverse is more of a bane than a boon because the usage is more for gaming and social media. In other fields like education and medicine, the usage is minimal. For many people, it's still a confusing word. In a nutshell, the future of the metaverse and technology and how we use it will decide if it's a bane or a boon. This is my bibliography. Thank you for seeing my presentation.